welcome to this week's American Scottish Foundation Scots in Us podcast. This week we are returning to Abbotsford, the home of Sir Walter Scott, to learn of the plans around this year's continuing celebration of Sir Walter Scott, the 250th anniversary. We will be speaking with Giles Ingram, who will take us through events of the plan for this year. And following that, we're going to catch up with the Holyrood Distillery, who have undertaken a very limited edition of 245 bottles of the Waverley Sir Walter Scott Whiskey Edition. It's just been released, it's only available in Scotland, and it's the first of what will be four planned whiskey releases, each bearing the name of another of Britain Scott's great novels. And so, without more ado, let's join Giles Ingram. Good afternoon, Giles. I'm so glad to catch up with you again. Hello, Camilla. It's lovely to see you and all our friends over in the States again. Well, it's been quite a journey, as we know, this last 18 months, two years. But this year is looking very exciting for Abbotsford and Sir Walter Scott's 250th anniversary. And so we thought it was time to catch up with you and find out what is now planned as everything is now really beginning to be back and underway. Yes, we've got a, uh, a packed year, I think, this year. It feels as if a lot of the things that we've wanted to do to celebrate uh, Sir Walter Scott's 250th anniversary are going to be uh, uh, very much coming alive this year. And a lot of projects uh, across Abbotsford, which meant some of which actually are very much about restoration as well. Uh, will be, will be coming on stream. But uh, yes, there's plenty for us to talk about, Camilla. So people, of course, have been able to visit Abbotsford um, for the last few years and take a tour of it. And also um, there is the wing that can have a special group staying there, which is another wonderful thing. But this year you have several events that are planned to celebrate Sir Walter Scott's anniversary. And of course, it's the year of Scotland's stories, which could not be more apropos to what Sir Walter is all about. Um, so when is that coming? So, um, yes, so you're absolutely right. So we're in the second half of the 250th anniversary of Walter Scott's birth, and that will run all the way through to August the 15th, which is Scott's Day, as we call his birthday. Uh, which also happens to be the 200th anniversary of the day in which King George IV uh, visited Edinburgh on the first uh, visit by a reigning monarch to Scotland in nearly 200 years, unbelievably. And that was all ma masterminded by George IV. And I know we've, we've had uh, other discussions about that uh, on that topic on, with the ASF as well. So we're going to be taking uh, a lot of our inspiration at Abbotsford from uh, the events that, that Scott masterminded for George IV's visit, because um, you talk about stories and Scotland stories, that event actually uh, was the genesis of a lot of what's become the stories that we tell ourselves about Scotland and what it is to be Scottish and some of those symbols of identity, because although Scott didn't invent them, uh, he certainly put tartan and whiskey slap bang in the centre as, as, as national icons and lifted them to a level um, of popularity, uh, which, which has, you know, we've never looked back from. Uh, and that very much started with that event 200 years ago this August. So at Abbotsford, we're going to be celebrating that uh, with the second of our annual festivals, uh, called Scott Fest. So that's going to be the 12th to the uh, 14th of August, over uh, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And we'd love anybody who is, who is planning to be thinking about coming to Scotland in the summer to try and incorporate that, uh, that, that Scott Fest event um, into their plans, because it promises to be a lot of fun. And I've promised this before, and I'm going to find a way to do this. But if you've got any representatives of clans or anything like that okay. coming along, do drop me a line and get in touch some way uh, via yourselves if necessary. Um, 
and we'll see if we can find a way to slip you into a procession, give you something to carry and something to wear. Can we put a shout out for that and let people know now that, you know, if they're going to be there, that this, that they should be also in touch with you at Abbotsford? Yes, please. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be really okay. fun. That's great. We will get that into our next bulletin and, um, and amplify that. Um, so before we go back to the festival, which I'd like to talk more about in a minute, you also have put together some anniversary commemorative items. I think there's a book and some other things, but there's also this very rare whiskey um, that is being, the Waverly was the first part of it. And from talking to Bonhams the other week, your edition is so limited that I would think it's on every collector's list at this point. We have had, we, we did very quickly as soon as we released it, uh, only 240 bottles released from a single cask. And it's, it's a blended whiskey uh, done for us from a uh, select number, select chosen single malts by Holyrood Distillery in Edinburgh. Um, and the first one is going to be called, well, the first one is available, it's called Waverley. So we're going to be naming them after Scott's novels. Scott was pr fairly prolific, so um, if it proves popular, <laughs> we could keep this going for a few years. Uh, so, uh, so the very first uh, batch is called Waverley, after the, the, the novel that really, really put him on the world map as an author. Uh, and we've chosen the name of Ivanhoe for the next one, but we haven't got a release date for the second one yet. And each will be different. Each will be masterfully blended separately. So, uh, but you will need to, to um, uh, due to the complexities of international law and alcohol, we can't ship them across to the States. So do come and visit and pick up a bottle whilst you're here. <laughs> The other thing that is really wonderful, and we were so honoured at ASF to play a small part in, as I say, amplifying the message, was the Honest Feld Library project, um, which is going to see these wonderful books and papers relating to Scott, returning to Abbotsford and to the National Library of Scotland. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because it really came together so quickly, but are we going to soon see them at Abbotsford? Yes, this is hugely exciting. It's, it's, it's one of those, uh, you know, every few decades, you, you have this, um, something will come onto the markets that is so important, cu culturally important, that everybody drops everything they're doing and rallies around to, uh, to, to make sure that, that, that it's saved for the nation, really. In other words, so that it isn't dispersed um, this is the case of the Honorisfield Library and the manuscripts and the books within it. Um, ourselves, National Trust for Scotland, the National Library for Scotland, the British Library, Bronte Parsonage and others um, were so keen to make sure that it wasn't broken up and went into private ownership that it could be, uh, the manuscripts within it could be made available for, for people to go and view for, 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 um, uh, for the future. So yes, I'm delighted that we're part of this enormous um, uh, effort to say what will be now be called, thanks to a very generous donor, the Blavatnik Honorsfield Library. Um, that will be the. It's uh, currently held by Sotheby's, uh, and the items we're awaiting a date at which uh, the items will then come across uh, to um, certainly the Scottish items, which will be. Um, uh, coming across to the National Library, uh, Abbotsford, and the National Trust of Scotland. We're expecting we'll probably have a date fairly soon, and they'll come across probably around about April, May time. Uh, they won't immediately go on display because there's going to be some essential conservation that's required, but as soon as we can, we'll be telling people uh, how to come and view them. I'm sure we'll manage to get them out quickly before they disappear into the vaults to be, to be looked after. Uh, but it's very exciting. So uh, the Scott items, Walter Scott items, there's a wonderful uh, original manuscript of Rob Roy, which is going to be going to the to the National Library of Scotland and to Abbotsford, uh, the only known uh, original part of Scott's famous long poem, The Lay of the Last Minstrel, which is a wonderful 
romantic chivalrous story of border feuds and clans in the days when the Scottish borders were really lawless. They haven't, they're not that much better these days, to be honest with you, Camilla. <laughs> um, uh, of the Scots and the Kerr clans, stories of the Scots and the Kerr clans fighting. Uh, and also a diary of, of the two months that Walter Scott spent uh, touring the, uh, the west coast of Scotland on a light ship, um, including with uh, Robert Stevenson, who was a very famous uh, mm -hmm. designer of lighthouses. In the days when this was cutting edge technology, the ability to be able to create lighthouses in the most exposed locations that could withstand everything that the sea could throw at it was cutting edge technology. And Scott went on a tour with Stevenson to inspect the lighthouses along the west coast of Scotland, where they take the full force of the, of the Atlantic, Atlantic gales. Uh, and of course, much of what he, he experienced found its way into his books, and uh, one of those being the, the pirate. Well, we'll have to share that with the Lighthouse, National Lighthouse Association, which is here in New York. Mm. Uh, of course, Alexander Hamilton was so involved in uh, propelling the lighthouses forward in the United States. So we need to chat more about all of that and um, see how we can do something um, around that. That's incredible. You're always coming up with a few bit of news and angle. Um, with the bringing of the Bards home, it really um, is a, a terrific moment for everybody to be celebrating Scottish literature in this way and, the, and how there was such a collaboration to get this done. And so people can listen to a wonderful program we did with for everybody, with the National Trust of Scotland, with yourselves, the National Library, um, with various experts, um, that is called Bringing the Bards Home. And it will tell this great story of the brothers who started this whole wonderful Honest Dog Library. And Camilla, can I just take this opportunity to express our thanks, enormous thanks to all the support and the well wishers uh, across North America, uh, including many people who, who gave uh, and donated towards the, uh, the fundraising campaign. Uh, we're enormously grateful and without their support, we simply wouldn't have hit this huge 15 million pound uh, fundraising target, which we only had a few months. Uh, to, to, to achieve quite an incredible uh, feat, which so many people have come in behind. So it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And there will, as you say, there will be more on this as the year progresses. As the year progresses. But in the meantime, um, I just wanted to go back to a few things that you have mentioned to me are upcoming. You have some an online exhibit about to come up um, later this month. Um, you have some book small book lectures that were around his his writings and um you have a, a may event and then we have august so what what is happening in may so we have um uh, uh um anyone that may have heard me talking about the 250th anniversary before might be familiar with the fact that we're liaising with over 60 organisations, most of whom are across Scotland, but even including Naples Opera House uh, for Lucia de Lammermoor, the, the, um, uh, the, the, the famous opera which was written and first performed there. Uh, we, we, we have a website called um, uh, uh, scott, scott250.com. And on there you'll find we keep it up to date with events and talks and all the kind of commemorative items you mentioned, royal mint coins, books, etc. Um, so our listings are always on there. So do check that out. Um, you, you will find, for example, um, uh, well, actually, it's going to be 28th of February. It's been brought forward, Camilla, our exhibition on Walter Scott's collection of chap books. Now, nobody I have ever spoken to, and including myself, I have to admit, before I came to Abbotsford a few years back, knew what chat books were. Um, and now chat books are effectively the social media of the 1700s, the 1600s. But in Scott's day, when he was a child, um, the, the everyday person 
they couldn't necessarily afford to buy newspapers or books. Books were very expensive for the average person, um, but there were very cheap pamphlets that, um, that traveling salesmen would, would walk around the countryside and from towns to village selling. And they were very disposable, they didn't last very long. You'd pass them around friends and family, read them by the fire in the kitchen, and within no time at all, they fell apart. But Scott loved these things because they were full of fairy, 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 fairy stories, tales of the supernatural, some of them quite sort of bawdy songs and bawdy tales as well about lovers and, and uh, uh, people running off to sea dressed as uh, men when they're actually women. There's great fun stuff in it. And Scott collected 3,000 of these, um, which we've now discovered is one of the world's top collections of chapbooks. Um, and with the University of Aberdeen, there has been a project with a number of universities and academics to understand and explore these. So on the 28th of February and running throughout this year, uh, there will be an online exhibition uh, of the chapbooks. Absolutely fascinating. I think they're hilarious. Uh, and it will be launched on the 1st of March with, uh, with an evening talk. So we'll tell you more about that. Well, I think that we'd love to get involved in that and, and maybe do, um, do a, an episode around that. It's so much the year of, uh, of stories is within what is, what is expressed in that, which is fantastic. Oh, yeah, that would be great. On, honestly, that's so much fun because they're complete. Don't, don't think that Scott was remotely stuffy. Or people no, stuffy in those days. <laughs> when I talk about it being the social media of this age, I mean it was, you know, it was pretty irreverent stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, so no, I can believe that. Um, erotic art was quite popular as well. Um, so um, but going back to this year and to the celebration of the 250th anniversary, what you put together in the last two years has been fantastic uh, uh, you know starting last year through now and the scott fest i think has caught everybody's imagination because you've got jousting and uh reenactments and all sorts of things happening are you going to keep this going i think it would be great to see this as an annual event oh it's wonderful to hear you saying that um yes we really must do that we need to find a way to do that yeah i mean it was put on and inspired by the 250th anniversary but it was so well received last year so this year we're hoping to add to all of sort of jousting and the medieval storylines with tartan whiskey uh, and add an evening uh, ball and party um, and uh, turn it from a two-day event into a three-day event so we want to really grow this and make and, and it for it to be an event that we can repeat year after year after year there's well, so the much menu, wonderful you, you Sorry? don't even have the setting, you have the venue. You, it's, you... it's amazing because actually Scott created completely inadvertently an amphitheatre. So this library building within which I'm sitting, of course, live <laughs> as I speak to you, um, uh, the windows uh, in this direction overlook the River Tweed and it falls down a slope, which is a perfect natural amphitheatre down towards the River Tweed, which is where we held the jousting last year. So Scott's given us this wonderful, beautiful location with a beautiful salmon fishing river tweed, surrounded by beautiful trees, uh, with his majestic Scots baronial, this whimsical building uh, overlooking it all. And the event takes place across all of those grounds and we want to make it bigger and better every year. I think this is fabulous. And I, I, I look forward to sharing all these updates with our members and friends. Um, we have a monthly a, a column which everybody loves around the Highland Games and the festivals, and we will pop it in there and start giving them updates in there. It's one of our most popular sections of our bulletin, and um, anything we can do to help, we're, we're here to help. Thank you. That'd be wonderful. And as I say, I mean, for years to come, and we'll have no end of stories. I mean, Scott Scott's <laughs> writing was inspired by by Scotland's past primarily. Um, so, uh, and, and a lot of it around the, the sort of wars of rebellion and the Orly intrigue around the Jacobite periods, everything that, that, that continues to inspire popular television programmes still to this day. Exactly. Um, so, fantastic material. Um, I think, um, thank you so much for 
chatting with us today. Um, it's absolutely uh, wonderful all that is coming up. And in the next few weeks, I look forward to returning and chatting with you, speaking with you more about other elements of all this, from honors fell to the chat books to everything else. So thank Mark, you. Thank you so much. It's really exciting here and wonderful to talk to you about it. All, all the right. best, everyone. Bye. 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 And now let us join the Holyrood Distillery. They're going to tell us more about all that has gone into putting together the Waverley Whiskey release, or it is in celebration of Sir Walter Scott's 250th anniversary, and only 245 bottles have been made. So let's learn more. And so I'd like to begin by speaking to Gavin Hewitt who's the non-executive director of Artisanal Spirits Company, which owns the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society and is the former CEO of the Scotch Whiskey Association. So good morning, Gavin. At this point, we've, we're going to have the 250th anniversary of the visit of Sir Walter Scott and the visit of Georgia IV. And you were approached by the Abbotsford Trust. Thank you, Camilla. It's very nice to see you and to talk to you this afternoon. I think I was, I am the chairman of the Friends of Abbotsford. And ah. I, made, I made a suggestion at the mm. time, almost I suppose 18 months ago, maybe even two years ago, that whiskey, given Scott's love of whiskey, should be an appropriate way of celebrating and securing a special release of whiskey to celebrate the 250th anniversary of Scott's birth. And from there, that was the origin of this whole whiskey idea. And it was because I knew enough about Scott's love of whiskey and his work to actually make Scotch whiskey legal in Scotland that I thought it would be highly appropriate to recognize Scott's work by creating a special whiskey. So Donald, Hello, um, it's wonderful to have you with us. And Thank you. you um, and you are the project specialist um, for around all the marketing of um, of the, what happens at Abbotsford, which is becoming such a, a tourist center and will be again as we now come out of COVID. Yes, so, so my role at Abbotsford is very much the, the development of our our, our retail offer uh, within within our gift shop um, on site, um, and and the whole experience of how we welcome uh, visitors, normality from all over the world uh, to Abbotsford as, as as they come to to experience the the site and learn more about Scott. And so, when you heard about this idea of doing this special release of the of whiskey, did you then start to work out? how it might be handled, because I think it's a limited edition, isn't it? Yes, so so late in 2020 probably is when we really sort of got, got the project moving moving forward. And we were working at that point on um, a, a development plan for Scott's 250th anniversary, principally around our, our, our retail offer and how we could increase the, the number of uh, products that were launched at different times throughout the, the anniversary to to create some profile and, and, and obviously create some income for, for the trust after the particularly difficult uh, time we'd, we'd just been through with, 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 with the COVID closures. And there was a number of different products within that, um, but the headline product um, was definitely the, the whiskey for all the reasons that uh, Gavin outlines. And then we really sort of felt this was going to be a, a, a very appropriate product to, to launch. Um, at the ideally, our initial time scales was to launch it in August of, of 2021, right on the, the 250th anniversary birthday. So at this point, you then identified the Holyrood Distillery to be yes, your partner. Well, well yes, ultimately, and I'm very grateful and glad that that's, that's where we ended up. But uh, pr prior to that, uh, I've been working with Gavin, we'd approached some um, some contacts locally within the borders to see if they would they would be able to work work with us. And um, although they were very interested and very very supportive, um, we couldn't quite get um, our 
um, expectations, what we required, and, and they are sort of sort of aligned um, up. But through that uh, relationship, there was a, a mutual contact at uh, from their side that put us in touch with um, a colleague of Nick's, uh, David Robertson, who was our initial contact at Holyrood, who, who he thought um, may be able to to help us and uh, and support us in, in, in delivering this. So that's where that initial connection to Hollywood came from. So at this point, can I bring in Nick Ravenpool, the managing director of the Hollywood Distillery? Good afternoon to you, Nick. Good afternoon, Camilla. Hello. So you're a New Zealander who came over to Scotland in 2007 uh, with a, a wonderful uh, plethora of awards and different distinctions most and you've been recognized for this by becoming a keeper of the quake so um and and also a freeman of the worshipful company of world traders a double award winner of the queen's award for international trade and now new zealander to, first new zealander to lead a single the scottish single malt whiskey distillery when you lay it all out like that, I can uh, feel a little bit awkward and embarrassed, but uh, most of <laughs> drinking trophies there, Camilla. <laughs> Lovely. So when this project was brought to you, I think it's got so many wonderful um, marketing ideas around it in the feel of history and tradition and the wonderful early days of how whiskey became legal and, and grew into the national drink that it is now. Um, so you then went about producing this, and I believe it's a blend, isn't it? Correct. It's it's a blended malt. And I mean, when, when the project arrived, I mean, how, how could we not be involved with something so important as, as memorialising this occasion? But what really got me was when Donald and I were first talking, one of the things that we, we shared over email and chatting was just how difficult COVID was for operations that had a tourist base. And, you know, I really felt from that from a Holyrood perspective, because we really felt that as, as a, as an Edinburgh tourist destination. So in my brain, it was, what, what can we do to help? Uh, and Donald said, can you, can you help make us a whiskey? And I thought, oh, well, we might be in trouble here because we were only started producing in 2019. Let me check in the warehouse to see if we've got any whiskey that is of age. So luckily we had a few parcels of, of, of stock. We had some sherry single malt. We had some Campbelltown malt. And uh, the, the proposition that I went back to Donald was, would it be okay if we blended you up something nice, something really delicious? And I talked to David and would, would he be up for the task of, of blending a whiskey for this occasion? And, and that's what we ended up doing was, was taking a couple of single malts, one with a, with, a, with a spicy, rich profile from being aged in sherry casks. The Cameltown malt was really lovely and fruity. And uh, we ended up putting together six different blends of, of which you know, we, we've selected the one that will be released shortly. So this is the Waverley? Correct, correct, the first release. And when will that come out? Does that come out in April or in August? When are you looking for this to be released during this anniversary period? Uh, we, we've got the liquid ready to go. So that's, that's really a question for Donald as to, as to when he wants the, wants the whiskey. Yeah, so we've, it's, it's been bottled, Camilla. It's, um, currently it's, a, it's on sale and available in, in the Abbotsford gift shop. So batch one is, is on the shelves at the moment. Uh, we, we, we've got it on sale just at the, the very last tail end of, uh, of last year. So it's proved really popular. And how many bottles are there in this limited edition? 240 70 centiliter bottles. So really, really limited numbers. And it's really amazing how even some quite recent whiskies are now commanding large prices. And I think this is going to be quite a valuable, unique um, reserve, as it were. Yeah, well, well, one of our aims was, was not only just to create a really quality whisky that, that, that we've been able to do with, with Nick and, and, and David at Holyrood, but also to, to create something that was going to be collectible um, as well. Yes. And, and that's where we came up with this idea of, of creating a, 
a series of bottlings over the you know the forthcoming um, months and, and, and years as well possibly. So that's why the first batch is named after Scott's first and possibly his most famous historical novel, uh, Waverley. And then the subsequent batches will, will also be named after a prominent uh, novel. So batch two, um, which will be released at some point once once we've de once we've decided on that, will will probably be named Ivanhoe, um, and then hopefully uh, as we get further into the series, we'll, we'll select some another two possibly Scott novels to to complete the set. And so um, Nick, can we get this internationally, or are we only at this time through the Abbotsford Trust? At this time, we're, we've only made whiskey for the Abbot, Abbotsford Trust. So it's not been, you aren't distributing it internationally for them? Not, not, as, not, not yet. as yet. Not as yet. Okay. Lovely. This is sounding like I need to make a visit to say hello to you and find out a little bit more. You would be more than welcome. <laughs> so thank you, gentlemen, for giving us, taking us on this journey around this first um, introduction of the uh, Scots, Sir Walter Scott's whiskey on this his 250th anniversary and to more to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see you guys. Thank you for joining us this week. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Sir Walter Scott, the 250th anniversary, um, Abbotsford 2022 as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. It's been wonderful to catch up with Giles Ingram again and hear of all that they are doing and to learn of how the whiskey that they are releasing as a special edition from Hollywood Distillery has come to be. The ASF Scots in Us podcast are released the first and third Monday of each month. And now with over 50 in our library, you can go to your favorite podcast platform and catch up on the episodes you might have missed. And so until next time, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.